What's going on everyone? Thanks for tuning in. Today's going to be another product review. It's going to be on the Element Optics Helix 6024 to 50 first focal plane scope. Before we get started on today's video, full disclaimer here, I did reach out to Element Optics and they were kind enough to send out this scope for me to do a review. So I want to say thanks. I will leave a link in the description box below for you guys to check out their scopes. If anyone who doesn't know who Element Optics is, they are a company based out of Europe, I believe. Mainly specializes in air rifle optics which these are used for but they can also be used on center fire rifles rimfire rifles etc the neat thing about element optics is they put all the scopes through some rigorous testing to make sure that it can handle any type of recoil they have a machine that simulates a 50 bmg recoil and they put all their optics through a 500 round simulation recoil test and that scope has to pass all tests before it can leave its facility we're going to jump down closer and take a look and see what's inside the box here all right, again, this is the Helix by Element Optics, 6 24 to 50 first focal plane scope. Go open up to see what we got inside the box here. So inside you're gonna get a styrofoam cover, Element Optics sticker, a manual, I believe this is a lens cleaning cloth, some Allen wrenches, I'll explain these here in a bit. Got some nice scope covers. Got two of them. This is a throw lever and a nice sunshade. And then you got the scope itself. All right, first thing you're gonna notice is a little card that is on the scope. This is the technician signature signing off that it's passed all its tests. It also comes with a bikini cover. Alright, so we're going to work our way from the back here towards the front. You guys can see it does have a fast focus eyepiece back here. It is really easy to turn. And then you got the Element logo on the left side and the Helix 6-24 FFP logo on the right side. According to Element Optics, this is aircraft grade aluminum. I don't know what type, but that's what it says on the website. Moving forward, you do have a magnification ring here. It goes from 6 power all the way up to 24. Included in the packaging, like I mentioned, is a throw lever. I put that in there just to show you guys how it looks like, but before when it came inside the box, it came with a plug that you use a supplied Allen wrench to take out. This is nice because if you have a low mounted scope on a bolt action rifle and if the bolt is to come up it can interfere with the throw level so that is included but I'm actually going to take that out and put this back in just because it looks cool and it actually helps with the magnification ring here. So now it's not stiff but it's not loose I guess it's just right in the middle you have to use somewhat of some force to move it but if you bump it it's not going to move on you moving towards the middle here you're going to get a 30 millimeter tube and then on the left side you're going to get parallax adjustments I'm not sure if you guys can see on the parallax here but it goes from 10 yards all the way to infinity again like I mentioned these are really popular overseas with air rifle shooters that's why it has parallax adjustments from 10 yards and then all the way up to 300. Moving up top here you do have your turrets it does come with a zero stop which is really nice a hard zero stop meaning that if you dial up you can crank it back down to zero and it stays put. And if you guys can hear this I'm gonna put up to the mic maybe you guys can Turrets are really, really nice on this. I would have to compare it with some of the higher end optics out there. I'm not going to name any names, but you guys get the picture on the windage side here as well. Very, very tactile and easy to move. And if you guys look closely on the underside of here, there is revolution marks which is included as well that way you know how many revolutions you have gone and that goes with windage as well 
Element Optics has included a toolless adjustment. Basically, you just take this top section out. All right, I had to do that off camera. The cap on there was on really tight, but if you just use two hands, it shouldn't be too hard. But basically, you just unscrew this. Comes off. All right, so let's just say your zero, your final zero sits like that. You can lift up the cap and set the mark onto zero. Screw everything back in and you're good to go. All right, setting the zero stop is pretty simple. Once you have a zero, you're gonna take off the cap. Unscrew that, pull the cap off. Underneath, you'll see the zero stop mechanism itself. There's this black little piece. You are going to unscrew the three little Allen screws using the small Allen wrench that is included. So once you loosen that, you can pull this off. If you look at this, there's a little knob right there. And then three screws that holds it in and then a raised lip. The raised lip is going to go back down into the turret mechanism. So you're going to put this back on and you're going to turn this all the way to the right clockwise until it hits the other metal raised piece on the scope here. Once that is done, you're going to snug in all these three Allen screws. You're not going to want to tighten them super hard, but just enough so this does not move. Once that is done, you're going to make sure the zero on your zero stop is pointed in the right direction. I'm going to put it back down. And then you're going to take your cap and snug that down. Then now you can dial it up if you need to. And then once you hit your zero stop, everything is nice and secure. Now this is a hard zero stop. You can crank it down really hard. It will not go past that. So that's how you set the zero stop on the Element Helix. I do appreciate that it has this toolless adjustment. That way you don't need to bring any tools to the range per se. But, and there's the windage. It's gonna do the same thing. A little easier to take off. Now this side does not have a zero stop. Normally windage knobs do not have any windage zero stops. You just have to basically put everything in, line up the zero on the line there, and put everything back together. Moving forward from there, again you get another 30 millimeter tube and then a 50 millimeter objective housing up top. And like I mentioned, it does come with sunshade. We'll throw that on, see how it looks. And that is how it looks all together. One thing I forgot to mention is that this scope is an MOA. They make two versions, uh, MOA and MRAD. I decided to go with MOA just because that's what I've been using for many, many years. And the quarter inch click at 100 yards is what I've been used to. Elevation has 65 minutes of adjustment. Windage has 40 MOA of adjustment. The length of the scope here I believe without the sunshade is going to sit at 14.3 inches and the weight is going to be 26 ounces. So it's somewhat heavy but then again a lot of the 50 millimeter 6 to 24, 5 to 25 etc are going to weigh in that one and a half to two pound mark. So by all means, it's not a light scope. If you want the higher magnification, you're gonna have to sacrifice some weight. So let's talk a little bit about the reticle here. I'm gonna roll in the footage here of what I was able to get in my backyard earlier today. It is the APR 2D 6-24 first focal plane MOA reticle. So like I mentioned, this is a first focal plane scope, meaning that when you dial your magnification in or out the reticle is going to change with the magnification so according to element optics website the moa scale on the horizontal and vertical crosshairs allow the shooter to measure objects downrange and quickly make adjustments with one division equaling one click the guesswork is gone this helps with ranging targets and obtaining a quick zero the reticle also has extensive holdover dots basically the holdover dots allow the shooter to hold with precision when there is no time to dial pretty self-explanatory uh, meaning that 
you can just raise the scope up a little bit and use the holdover points versus dialing on your elevation. There's also numbers both on the horizontal and vertical axis in the scope. So that's about it. I'm gonna jump up top and give my final thoughts on this scope for you guys. All right, we're back up top. My final thoughts on this scope. Everything seems to be really well built. The turrets are probably my favorite features on this scope just because they are super tactile, easy to turn, and it's got that hard zero stop. The glass quality on this is pretty good. I was outside tinkering around with it earlier today. Anything from 18 power and below is going to be crystal clear. Above that, it's going to be just a little bit fuzzy. I just want to say thanks again to Element for sending this out for me to do a review. Greatly appreciate that. If you guys haven't checked them out yet, the link will be in the description box below. Check them out. Really good company. Don't be afraid just because a lot of people say that Element Optics is aimed towards air rifle shooters. Like I mentioned, they put all their scopes through rigorous testing up to 50 BMG. And that right there just shows that the scopes can handle recoil, just not for air rifles. This will be going on my Brigara 300 Win Mag, so I'll be doing an update video on this in the near future to see how well it holds up to that in accuracy testing, tracking testing, etc. That'll be in a whole separate video down the road, but as for right now, I just wanted to show you guys what this scope consists of. If you have any questions, leave them in the comment section below, and I'll try my best to answer it. And until next time, be safe everyone.